post 9-11, there's been an increased focus on the Islamic tradition. There's been an increased focus on the Islamic way of life. And there are huge debates about extremism and fundamentalism and conservative Islam and traditional Islam and moderate Islam and all of these labels, right? And there's a huge debate and discussion going on. But we have to understand that all of this is not new. This is not a new phenomenon. When we read the Quran and the Sunnah, we understand that these challenges existed from the very beginning of Islam. So there's nothing to worry about. <laughs> we've, we've been through this, we've done that, we've won the t-shirt. You know, we have good experience. It's not as if it's a new unprecedented phenomena. All of a sudden people are challenging Islam. It's no big deal, right? We've always stood on the shoulders of giants, the ulama, and they've given us answers. You know what's very interesting about the Islamic tradition? What's very interesting is that our ulama were the ones who were the first to challenge Islam. That's how amazing our tradition is. If you read the works of Razi, read, read the works of Ibn Kathir, you see, they pose a question and then they give you an answer. Right? Because our tradition was always about thinking and doing tadabbur, pondering over the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in this process of pondering, in this process of tadabbur, you're going to get questions. Right? But the beautiful thing is, our ulama had the right fertile soil in order to understand the questions in the correct light and provide answers because they had the right fertile soil where a seed was planted it would grow into the fruits of iman it wouldn't grow into a thorny bush right and so i don't think we should worry this is not an unprecedented issue okay read all of our classical works from Ibn Taymiyyah to Al-Ghazali to, to Razi to Qurtubi to Ibn Kathir to... There's a whole list. It goes on and on and on. They answered questions for us, whether the questions were about philosophy, whether the questions were about aqidah, whether the questions were about spirituality, whether the questions were about social issues, moral issues, ethical issues, ethical dilemmas. I mean, we have it. It's in our tradition. And we should be proud, Islamically proud, right? Not ego, not egocentric, but you know, pride. Have a sense of pride that we have an amazing intellectual tradition with ulama that we love and ulama that have actually defended, represented, articulated and conveyed the Qur'an and Sunnah throughout the ages. I think our job now is just to access that information and to contemporize it, if there is such a word. To make it contemporary. Because some of the language in the 15th century, some of the language in the 11th century is maybe archaic. Some of its meanings we don't understand. And we just have to basically make it more modern. We don't have to reinvent the Quran and Sunnah. We don't have to reinvent our classical tradition. We're standing on the shoulders of giants.